Thank you for joining the webinar. Today, I, Yuya Ono from Sexy Medical, I'm introducing our own uh, proprietary technology, also for the use of quantitative measurement of oligonucleotides. Pulsar is the abbreviation for prop alternation link level self-assembly reaction, and Sexy Medical registered Pulsar as a trademark in the United States, Japan, and so on. So this is the agenda for today's webinar. First, I'm introducing the gun binding assay as a quantitative analytical method for oligonucleotides with some pros and cons. Second, I am presenting Pulsar technology and duality hybridization Pulsar as a unique quantitative method for the ligand binding assay. The next, I'm showing in the applications for dual hybridization Pulsar. And at the end of the presentation, I'm sharing the frequently asked question for dual hybridization Pulsar method. At first, I would like to mention the quantitatively bioanalysis method in oligonucleotides. In general, we use lc musmus or LBA method when we measure quantitatively the concentration of our oligonucleotides solutions. As for lc musmus, it has an advantage of a signal selectivity among the intact body and its metabolites, as we can say separate signals via filtration by using suitable color. However, LC must cannot realize so far the high sensitivity of picomolar level. In contrast, LBA hybridization method can realize high sensitivity of picomolar level with relatively high throughput. However, the biggest challenge for the conventional LBA method is that it is difficult to separate signals of the metabolites from those intact bodies. And for the next few slides, slides I will introduce how we overcome this challenge. So before then, I am mentioning the conventional assays or LBA methods in oligonucleotides. One category as a show here as a ligation assay, cutting assay, and a combination. So we use an, uh, enzymes such as ligase and a an, uh, single strand specific nuclease to eliminate the background noise of a no or weak hybridization to the capture probes. In this method, uh, we can uh, we design one single capture probe. And then uh, in order to hybridize the full length of an analyte oligonucleotides. Also, as I show in number three, we have a combination method to use both ligases and nucle nucleases. The alternative is to use two different probes, um, capture probes and then uh, detection probes. These probes hybridize with the partial sequence of an uh, unlike the oligonucleotides respectively. And the detection probes will be washed away uh, when the sequence is, sequence is not much with the unlike oligonucleotides. In this uh, hybridization assay, we don't have to use enzyme which will uh, make our assay procedure longer and more complex. So in the slide, I summarize the pros and cons of the LBA method I mentioned in the last slide. The ligation, cutting, and ligation and uh, cutting assay. Um, <clears throat> we need enzymes in order to obtain uh, positive signals. And then assay procedures become longer and complex. In contrast, dual hybridization assay doesn't need enzymes, and the assay procedure is really simple. In this assay, we need to consider how to strengthen the hybridization between the probes and the allies. And then uh, it can be solved by using appropriate, appropriate chemical modification of a sugar chain in the capture and detection probes. The biggest challenge, especially for a conventional dual hybridization method, is a signal distinction um, from the metabolites with partial deletion of their intact sequences. We cannot minimize the cross reactivity caused by such metabolites by the conventional method. Also, how to realize a high uh, sensitivity 
uh, less, uh, with less than 50 picogram per milliliter can sometimes be a concern for the LBA when we measure the oligonucleotide nucleotide concentrations in the tissues with low drag migration or low uh, concentration in plasma tissues. To overcome these challenges, we sexy medical developed a new hybridization method pass ulcer, and I'm introducing this technology in the next few slides. So what are the pulsar technology and a dual hybridization pulsar? So first, uh, I'm introducing what is pulsar. So pulsar is a signal amplification technology with the uh, principle of an, uh, aggregating the biotin labels by the self-assembly process of its oligo-DNA. In this technology, we prepare the pair of an honeycomb probes, which have a complementary sequences as uh, shown in X, Y, Z, and X prime, Y prime, Z prime. In a certain condition, a Y region of an one uh, honeycomb uh, probe hybridized to Y region, Y prime region of another probe. And first we form uh, this uh, form, and then next uh, X and uh, Z, uh, Z region hybridized to X prime and uh, Z prime regions. Then, uh, hybridization occurs and change to form the poly DNA as a self assembly process. And that realizes a high sensitivity uh, of the signals. Then we invented the dual hybridization method combined with pulsar probe, which we call dual hybridization pulsar. In this technology, we designed an assist probe uh, attached in the pulsar probe and then capture probe uh, attached to the piece. So in this capture and assist probes, we insert chemical modifi chemically modified nucleic acid in order to stable, uh, realize a stable hybridization. The lengths of the uh, capture probes and assist probes are dependent on the analytes, but it's usually in the range of eight to 10 bases. These probes, probes can fully hybridize to an intact body, but once the three prime end of the analyze is deleted as a metabolite, it is detached of the uh, capture probe and in a certain temperature condition and no signal uh, for the uh, metabolites uh, will be detected. In this method, we don't use nucleases or ligases. So the hybridization process is really simple. It is just the same as a conventional dual hybridization method. And we already made a patent application for this method. So in the next, next two slides, I'm introducing the data of a dual hybridization pulsar method, which shows an advantages of high sensitivity and no cross reactivity with metabolites. At first, we evaluated the calibration curve and an intraday uh, reproducibility of the analyze, which is a 60 mode ASO single strand uh, whose sequence isn't shown here. We used a uh, tenfold diluted mouse plasma as an un uh, unlight sample solutions for evaluation. For the calibration, we obtain a good calibration curve with an R square uh, value of an almost one and percent RE uh, within the plus minus and 10% range. For the reproducibility, we also obtain results of an LLOQ of an one picogram per milliliter and then a percentage RNE RE within plus minus 10% range for one to 100 picogram per milliliter. That means we met the criteria of an LBA guidelines. So the, this slide shows the data of a cross reactivity for the uh, one, one base deletion of a, a three prime end the metabolite of an analyte shown in the last slide. So we evaluated the signals of a 100% uh, intact body and the mixtures of an intact and uh, metabolites and 100% metabolites uh, body of a concentration of a five picogram per milliliter and a 50 uh, picogram per milliliter respectively. In this, uh, in both of the concentration, you can see the signals of a metabolites 
is on really background noise level. And then the uh, signals of an intact body is maintained even if an, uh, we, uh, the metabolizer is, uh, is a mixture. For an uh, R&D percentage, we uh, maintain the uh, good range uh, in a four to five uh, picogram per milliliter. And then uh, even in a 50 picogram per milliliter, uh, this is within the uh, uh, range of an uh, LBA guidelines. So even under the mixed uh, with metabolized conditions, uh, percentage RAE met the cri uh, guideline criteria. So the next thing I'm uh, going to introduce some applications for dual hybridization pass. The first, I'm uh, sharing the application for the plasma protein binding studies. So often in oligonucleotides, uh, clients face concerns of a high adsorption rate uh, to the proteins or the plastics like uh, sample tubes. And then a quantitative analysis like IC50 calculation is quite difficult or impossible when the protein binding rate is high. So actually we overcame these difficulties uh, by obtaining the combination of an applying some anti-adsorption uh, measures to tubes and devices together with a high sensitivity analysis like pulse. So next slide, I'm showing the effect of an anti-adsorption uh, treatment with using high sensitivity pulsar method. So actually we used uh, various types of an ASO with chemical modification of the sugar chains and evaluated the signal's strength when we use a norm binding tube and a DNA low binding tube commercially available and a DNA low binding tube uh, with a, a adsorption, uh, prevent adsorption uh, measure. So in this case, uh, we actually use a plasma generator with an uh, electric uh, discharge to perform hydrophilic treatment to tubes and devices. So you can uh, see the results. And for all kinds of an ASOs, the signals level, signal level of a uh, DNA low binding tube uh, with an uh, pre uh, preventing adsorption measures, uh, we maintain the signals of these. And then another suitable application for dual hybridization pulsar is a distribution study using tissue matrix. For the evaluation using tissue matrix, the biggest challenges are number one, the pretreatment, uh, extraction of an extraction of an oligonucleotide as a col uh, collection rate will really vary depending on the tissue types. And then number two, the successful creation of a matrix curvation curve. So, which is uh, this is a key to successful measurement as we need a good level of work in optimal curvation curve. For these challenges, we don't use any extraction process, but do lysis uh, reagent, such as a uh, direct PCR lysis agent and then protease kinase A, K. And then make a uh, standard uh, procedure, just listed here. So actually we sexy medical have a good experience of a uh, know-how of how to create optimized matrix calibration uh, curves and uh, we uh, will propose an optimal pretreatment method for each conference from clients. So another topic is an, is an additional uh, application uh, to the dual hybridization method is an, uh, we are uh, working for the electrochemical luminescence ECL method. So in this an ECL application, we don't use pulsar as a signal amplification but we use uh, vitamin strep, strep averaging bonds in the capture probe as a solid phase and then big labeled uh, assist probe uh, instead of a pulsar probe. So we can detect signals by mesoscale ECL using a uh, ruthenium labeled antidic antibody. Our development of this technology is an underway but then uh, we already uh, made a patent application for this and then we are happy to introduce the data as soon as they are available. So finally, I'm summarizing 
the advantage for us to use a uh, dual hybridization policy. The main advantage of the technology uh, no application and uh, extraction processes procedure is required for the analytics. And the second advantage is a high sensitivity and a low cross reactivity with the metabytes. So with these advantage, uh, advantages uh, for the toxicology studies, uh, sample can be diluted, uh, diluted uh, when uh, we need a, we only have a slow sample volume. And then a TK satellite group is not required and then uh, this applicable to micro sampling. These are the uh, advantages for toxicology studies. And for the DMPK studies, so then uh, we usually need a high sensitive uh, measurement system. So uh, such as a protein binding and then tissue distribution, tissue distribution evaluation. For these uh, studies, and, uh, we can use a uh, pulsar dual hybridization pulsar as a high sensitivity uh, measurement system. So basically the validation cost can be uh, reduced by using uh, such uh, method uh, between the TK and the DMK studies. And also then uh, this uh, hybrid dual hybridization pulsar is compliant to LBA guidelines and then a QA GLP process will be applicable. So the, the finally, I'm introducing the facts for the dual hybridization pulse. So actually we have several uh, facts for this dual hybridization pulse. And then I'm introducing the major uh, ones. The first, in the dual hybridization pulse, do you obtain similar, uh, similar results of a cross reactivity for the various types of oligonucleotides? The answer is yes we have obtained a good results of a cross-reactivity by using various types of test articles from our clients. So number two, it is possible to distinguish the signals of an induct analyte from those of a three prime N minus one metabolites in longer change of oligonucleotides, such as thirimer by this method also. Uh, yes, uh, it is uh, technically possible. We can have, we have a good experience of a long chain oligos using a test article from our clients. So number three, uh, what is the minimum base length of a capture and assist probes? So usually uh, we, uh, we design the uh, capture assist probes uh, from a 210 uh, base basis, but we have tested designed uh, five mers as the shortest of our capture and assist probes. So number four, have you examined the cross reactivity with defects at the five prime end using dual hybridization pulses? And it is possible to evaluate three prime and five prime and defects simultaneously by this method. Yes, uh, technically it is possible to evaluate the cross reactivity for five prime and defects by changing the probe design. And then uh, we uh, examine uh, such uh, possibility and this is in process. We are working on a method development of the, the section between three prime and five prime ends at the same time also. So number five, are there any biological sample not suitable for hybridize, dual hybridization pulse? So I say that nothing in particular. Uh, we have a lot of an experience in the various tissues, plasma, serum, and so on. However, uh, we cannot use heparin as an uh, anticoagulant for plasma collections and before it, because an, uh, heparin will inhibit the uh, uh, hybridization uh, reaction itself. So number six, uh, what do you actually do for anti-absorption to tubes and devices in your plasma protein binding studies? So we use a plasma generator with an uh, electric discharge to perform hydrophilic treatment to tubes and devices, as I mentioned in the previous slide. So this is, an, uh, this is all about the, my presentation for today. And thank you very much for listening uh, to my presentation. So actually we are working on updating the information with the new data of this uh, puzzle method and I'm happy to present in the near future. So please uh, feel free to contact me, Yuya Ono, uh, if you have any question about puzzle technology. Thank you very much and see you again, hopefully soon.